give it up for Aoife McCloskey. Cool. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be here in Whelan's uh, at a respectable hour and uh, not after five pints too many. <laughs> so hopefully I'll remember tonight. Uh, so as Jasmine said, uh, I'm a PhD student, uh, or as I like to tell myself at night, I'm living the PH dream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, which essentially means I live on burritos uh, for most of the time. Uh, so I'm studying astrophysics, and uh, my particular research topic is uh, solar physics. Uh, and space weather. So for those who may not be familiar, there is weather in space. Uh, what? Uh, first of all, there's no air out there, right? Uh, so it's a bit different than the weather here on Earth. Uh, you can tell from the weather outside now, of course, uh, Storm Ewan or Doris or Paddy, whatever it is at the moment, uh, is out there. But we also get storms in space. And uh, unfortunately, we don't call them human names. Uh, I might start a petition like uh, Storm Paddy coming at us from space there. Uh, but these storms are actually caused by the sun. Uh, so us scientists being very creative call them solar storms. Uh, well, this is, good. Uh, this is good. And the reason these storms actually happen is because the sun has a magnetic field. So if people are aware, uh, the Earth also has a magnetic field. Um, I'm going to get out my uh, apparatus that I brought with me tonight uh, to just demonstrate this very quickly. So, oh, we're on the wrong way. So if this is the Earth, uh, Aldi sponsored, okay? Uh, forgive the color. Uh, if this is the Earth, the Earth has a magnetic field. And the magnetic field looks something like this. So my, you see my fingers here. If anyone's done that iron filings experiment in, in school, this is what you should have got, right? Um, but that's grand. The Earth is a solid body. Uh, so when it rotates, the magnetic field pretty much stays the same. Um, now we talk about the sun, right? So now, using our imaginations, this is the sun. Uh, uh, I couldn't afford another orange. Uh, so this is the sun, and of course the sun is not a solid body. So as Jasmine said, the sun is a massive ball of plasma. And this essentially is constantly flowing, and it's very dynamic. Uh, so this does uh, a few weird things to the magnetic fields. Uh, of the sun. So instead of that really nice shape, it kind of gets all tangled up. And uh, I like to think of this as, you know, when you're listening to uh, your music with your earphones and uh, you're like, done with that, put them away, into the pocket. Two minutes later, maybe I want to listen to this again. Take out your earphones. What the hell has happened? Okay. <laughs> it's a mess. Okay. It's a tangled mess. I think someone needs to do a PhD in that because that's a, I have no idea what goes on in, that, in the pocket. Um, <laughs> But that's what happens with the sun's magnetic field. So it essentially becomes really, really tangled. And uh, this leads to a buildup of energy. So it builds up and builds up as the plasma moves around. And of course, that leads to, bam, an explosion. OK? Uh, and when I say an explosion, I mean this explosion is huge. So we're talking about 10,000 times the amount of energy than there was in the Hiroshima bomb. So that's, that's a lot, right? And that comes hurtling off the sun. And uh, that's called a solar flare. Um, and this can also send material out. So material from the surface of the sun comes out, um, and that's what's known as a solar storm. So that's where it comes from. Um, and that's all grand. The sun doesn't really mind that. That doesn't really do much to the sun. The sun's like, whatever, you know, just another bit of material off there. Um, but us sitting here on the Earth, <laughs> we're actually in the path of that some of the time, right? So we're kind of minding our own business, going around, you know, maybe sticking the kettle on for the 10th cup of tea. Um, and this is coming towards us, right? So now you're starting to panic a bit, I'd say. Don't panic. Uh, it sounds bad, OK? Uh, it is bad. <laughs> Not going to lie. Uh, but as it comes, actually, we're actually protected. So as I said, before we have a magnetic field, right? That's a great thing for us. So it means that all these particles uh, coming from the sun, actually, as they come in uh, to the magnetic field, they're actually deflected. So it's like a, it acts like a shield. And these particles come in, and they actually spiral along the field lines. And the places they come in are the north and south pole. So if anyone's heard of the northern lights, the aurora borealis, yes? Has anyone seen them? Yeah. yeah, a few people, a few people. So I've actually seen them myself, <laughs> just on a casual trip to Iceland. Uh, <laughs> not to brag. Uh, best experience of my life. Um, highly recommend. And that's, that's really nice. The aurora, we're like, Thanks, son. You know, what a beautiful display. Uh, 
But of course, that's not the whole picture, right? This can actually be quite damaging uh, to technology. So things like satellites are out in space, they're constantly orbiting around the Earth. This can actually cause damage to those satellites. And uh, one of the other main problems is astronaut safety. So if you're an astronaut and you're launched off, hurtled off the Earth, uh, I don't know why you do that, uh, <laughs> hurtled off the Earth, uh, and you're out of, in, in space with no protection from the magnetic field, suddenly you're exposed. You're exposed to this really high energy radiation, uh, which can actually be fatal at, at some level. So solar flares could actually kill astronauts, right? Don't go to the media and say that now, actually. Don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> they love that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, and that's, but uh, as I said, we have magnetic field, so we're okay. We're, we're safe inside our bubble. Now, as a scientist, uh, I do love to think about the doomsday scenarios. <laughs> so for instance, what happens if we didn't have a magnetic field, you know? What happens if we didn't have an atmosphere? Uh, mad things, right? Mad things would happen, uh, besides the solar flare stuff, right? Uh, so I really started thinking, what would it be like to live on another planet? Um, so I'm sure some of you may have heard of the NASA announcement last week. Yes, woo, NASA love announcements, it's great. Um, they'd announced that we have found seven planets, right? Seven rocky planets orbiting another star which is kind of just down the road in astronomical terms, or 39 light years uh, down the road. Um, and that's great, right? And they say three are potentially habitable, so maybe we could go and live there. Uh, now, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I think it's very apt timing that NASA released the fact that we could actually go and live on a, another planet if things aren't going so well here. Uh, Hugh must not be named. <laughs> uh, which is fascinating. So I started thinking, what would it be like maybe to live on these planets? <coughs> maybe for a day, maybe for the rest of our lives if things really go bad here. Uh, and I was thinking, so if you lived on one of these planets, right, they orbit a star and it's actually a, an ultra cool dwarf star. Uh, not because of its social status or how many Twitter <laughs> followers it has, uh, but because it's cool. And uh, when we say cool in astronomy, we mean it's 2,500 degrees. Uh, but that's cool compared to our sun, which is 6,000, so there you go. Uh, but the fact that it's cool means these planets can orbit the star uh, a lot closer. So if you were to live maybe on one of these planets, the average year is only 10 Earth days, right? So every 10 days, it's a new year. So the New Year's parties would be out of control. I mean, <laughs> nonstop, 10 days, every 10 days. Uh, I'm not complaining, right? That's him. That's great, 10 days, every 10 days a holiday. Um, but then there's the other thing, uh, the fact that the planets are actually tidally locked, which means that one side of the planet is constantly facing uh, the star. So there is no day or night. So there's, it's constantly daytime on one side and constantly nighttime on another, uh, which means the real estate prices on one side would be just astronomical. <laughs> uh, but that's our ground, we could live on one side. <laughs> we could live on one side of the planet and but then there's also the thing that it might actually heat up that side by a lot, right? So if you maybe be 50 degrees every day, which is nice maybe. Uh, but this means that Mother Nature itself always tries to balance things. So it will try to distribute that, that heat energy around and essentially you'd end up with 300 kilometer winds. So you might need to live underground uh, <laughs> and that would be your life. Uh, but maybe, this, maybe the conditions are right, maybe there is life, and that's really exciting. And us as humans, we love that. We're like, oh, new friends, let's communicate with them. So get your phone out, you know, send them a text, because that's all we have here. How's it going over there? Uh, any room uh, <laughs> is it okay if I bring a few friends. Uh, and uh, you send that out, and of course, the, the fastest that can go is the speed of light. And they're 39 light years away. So it would take around, 39 years, exactly, 39 years to get there, <laughs> right? Uh, so you send them a text, hopefully they see it, if we're assuming now they have phones, <laughs> and uh, they reply, right? So eight years later, you've probably forgotten at this stage about it. Get your phone and you open it up, and like, oh my God, it's, it's them, right? You read the text, who is this? <laughs> Should have said who it was. Uh, anyway, thank you very much, uh, you've been very kind. <laughs>